Warning, this episode contains mild to heavy, explicit spoilers. Listen at your own risk. Reviews, discussions, and theories about films in horror, sci-fi, and genre. This is The Horror Deconstruction. Like, share, and subscribe to hear more. John Kramer is seeing the remaining time of his life fade away as his illness steadily consumes his body. At a support meeting, he is given the slight whisper of hope. There's a controversial yet foolproof medical procedure that can cure him. It's expensive, and it's in Mexico, but it works, supposedly. Kramer, who's already knee-deep in the corpses of people that didn't appreciate their lives, is ready to save his own, and off he goes to be scammed and then begin his ruthless retribution. This is the premise of Saw X, the rebooting, restarting of the franchise which wipes the slate clean of its last two rebooting, restarting entries, Jigsaw and Spiral. The series of films did twists and turns to somehow drag the primary antagonist back into the forefront even after his very graphic death in Saw 3. Saw X, the X meaning part 10, and not the X in Mexico, is a rejiggering of the horror series to make Kramer, aka Jigsaw, the vigilante with a competent reasoning to put people in death traps. As in the opening, when he casually observes a worker in a hospital licking his chops at the thought of stealing a patient's wallet and watch, we are propelled into Kramer's fantasy of having a machine sucking the eyeballs out of said man's head. Now it's all fantasy. The potential of Kramer's justice. But he doesn't do it because the man makes the correct choice and not stealing. Oh, you better watch out. Kramer's looking. So obviously Kramer has some issues. This film takes place before the events of Saw 2 and tries to humanize Kramer even though he left two guys to either chop off their legs or starve to death in a closed room. You know, that would destroy the idea. You can say all you want, well Kramer was ill, well his kid was lost due to a scumbag trying to rob his wife. This is what drives him. The guy is a Looney Tunes. And sure I agree, some real vile people should be strapped to ass slicing toilets But this is malarkey of trying to shine him in a heroic light. This does a disservice to the brand and takes the horror from Saw. Michael Myers never stopped to help an elderly person cross a road. Freddy Krueger didn't give out food to the homeless in a subsequent sequel. This isn't Death Wish. This is supposed to be torture prawn. That said, the film itself concerns a lengthy preamble of Kramer being wined and dined by well-kept charming Norwegian scam artist Cecilia Peterson boasting the effects of her missing doctor father who was run out of town for his revolutionary procedures. This is clearly setting a path for a new trilogy or story point in the Saw franchise to take place at least in between the first three films. The movie, directed by Krevin Grutert, is competently made. He helmed a surprisingly good Saw 6. I didn't see Saw 3D, but I did see the easily forgettable Jigsaw. Still, he's a better choice to get it out of the hands of Darren Lynn Bousman, destroyer of the franchise. The acting is all fine, the movie doesn't look cheap, but easy to see the budget didn't have to be big since 70% of it takes place in one room. Not even a maze-like setting like the superior first film. Why I enjoyed the first film? The genuine mystery, the locations, the dark cop story, the cool reveal. That's what the first Saw was. But the movies, of course, thought it worked only because of the death traps, and yes, those are the main focuses of the film, but with Winnell and Juan exiting the series after part 3, the dumbing down of the franchise was inevitable. Back in the focus as protagonist this go are Kramer himself, as always excellently played by Tobin Bell. He's a very good actor and cool octogenarian. You can't dislike the guy. He's like a white Tony Todd, or even whiter Robert England. A great actor forever trapped in declining schlock horror. Joining him is Shawnee Smith as Amanda, Jigsaw's right-hand woman, sporting the worst wig I've ever seen in cinematic history. Courtney Cox's haircut in Scream 3 has been eclipsed. She's the reasonable half of the killers in this film, even though in part 2 and 3 she's a deranged psychopath. This doesn't make any sense. To go back to the antagonist of this film, Sinov Makoti Lund as Cecilia is quite good, but the team behind the film messed up by making her overtly evil. Had she been the other side of Kramer's mania, it would make her much more compelling. 
The fact she survives the end of the movie is clearly setting her up to be a primary antagonist for the sequels, either her or her missing father. She was interesting and called Jigsaw out on his bullcrap. I like that. She's a scumbag, but she didn't lie to herself like Kramer does when he exclaims that he didn't kill players of his games when he asked them to saw their legs off and do it within three minutes. So how do they try to make Kramer a good guy besides having him scammed and avenging dying people whose hopes were traded in for cash? They throw in a cute little ethnic boy who plays soccer in the middle of the night, of course. I will say I did not think I would see child waterboarding in a film set for public release. And the water being actually blood. Where he got that much blood, who knows? As for the gore in this film, stellar. This is the most gruesome mainstream horror film I've seen this year. One that is actually in theaters sold as a horror film. Graphic, bloody, actually disgusting, well done. This movie will not fool real fans of the franchise. They know you can't paint stripes off a zebra and call it a horse. Kramer is a psychopath, and trying to scrub the grossness from him takes away the disturbing horror of the franchise. He's a sadist, a creep. Don't think you can make this seem real. As for its entertainment factor, when the blood starts gushing, that's obviously when the movie has any real interesting things going on. Its plot scenes are repetitive and meandering, and don't feature any true mystery. You know who Kramer is. You know Kramer, who saves a child in Saw X, kidnaps one in Saw 2. You know Amanda, who is crying at the fate of a young drug addict in Saw X, plays along and gets a similarly young drug addict doomed in Saw 2. This is bullcrap. Keep Kramer a villain, keep him in the shadows. Even the puppet no longer has any meaning if you see John Kramer walking around for the first half hour of the movie. Whatever. It's an okay film. It's not a total piece of crap that Spiral was. And for that, being a Saw film, that's better than anything. 5 out of 10, walking into the sunset with a little boy carrying a bag of cash to plan out the torture and murders of people for the next couple of months. This has been The Horror Deconstruction.